Hey guys, my name is Simsy. How you all doing? Welcome to the start of a brand new campaign series here today on the channel. We're back on Medieval 2 Total War Definitive Edition. We're going to be playing as the Byzantines here today. So, if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video a like, subscribe if you're new around here with notifications on, leave me in the comments, feedback and suggestions for the series, and we'd like me to expand and conquer. Feel free to leave a dislike if you don't like Medieval 2 for whatever reason. YouTube memberships and Patreon are all in the description below. It really helps out the channel. So we're going to be doing a long campaign with 45 regions as the conquest along with Rome and Jerusalem. I was kind of craving a vanilla experience and sort of a nostalgia trip so I thought we'll go back to the vanilla version of Medieval 2 Total War. Byzantium stands on the crossroads of Europe, Asia, and Africa. A prophetic dream led the Emperor Constantine to found the city, which is a center of culture, commerce, and diplomacy. the strength and courage of one willing to take charge of perhaps the most vibrant city in the world. Man, oh man, that intro never gets old. <laughs> yeah, so I thought, funnily enough, I've never actually done a medieval to definitive edition like vanilla campaign on the series and look i thought why not we haven't done one before mostly i usually play mods because they sort of enhance the experience but i was craving some vanilla so let's play as the byzantines we start off with what four territories the main objective of this series is to form or we have five or so form the Roman Empire, I guess, retake and restore Rome, and yeah, 45 regions, so that's probably, what, if we reform the Eastern Roman Empire to its, to its historical borders, that'll probably work. So, we've got Emperor Alexius, who's 45 here, 8-star commander, chivalry neutral, then we've got Prince John, who's a 5-star commander, which is 23. So I don't know if we start off with some of the best generals, but uh, that's right. Anna is only 20. Andronicus and Isaac are quite young as well. So I've got a strong uh, family tree for now. Okay, well, let's get stuck right in to the campaign. So the Byzantines have a lot of rebel territory around them, which we want to try and quickly gobble up as best we can. Prince John can head further south and he also can build some watchtowers. We want to try and get that line of sight as best we can. Only 200 gold. We've got a fair few generals as well. We want to be able to move rapidly and quickly throughout my land. So we'll go around and building paved roads and just normal roads. So it'll probably take us, what, 100 or so turns? Um, before we hit those long victory conditions. We're not going to do a short campaign. We'll do a long. So let me know in the comments, guys. Who would like me to expand and conquer? Uh, we'll just sort of have to see how we go. Because we've got Venice. Yes, Turkey. Um, Egypt. A lot of neighboring factions. And it's been what, it's been so long since I've actually played a straight-up vanilla campaign. It's going to be a lot of fun. Whether or not we get to sort of the Mongols and the Tumurids and the Aztecs sort of stuff, it's uh, up to you, I guess. Okay, so we could marry off Anna here. I shall approach this mm, delicately. Thirty-one. Is it someone I will like? Yeah, unless she gets sort of intercepted or we find anyone, we're probably better off marrying her to one of my generals, just to secure my family line. We'll try and track my lineage as well. Yeah. Moving Bishop further south. So, the quicker we can secure Jerusalem, the better. 
We'll send my merchant up to this gold mine here, up towards the Balkans. Uh, I think it's like, from what I can remember, oh man, it's been so long. Let me know tips and tricks, but I do know one, that um, if you take Jerusalem, regardless of what faction you play as, you get a 15% public order boost. So we want to try and get that as quickly as we can, especially on this difficulty. Generals-wise, I'm going to go with the Dread, because um, I personally prefer the morale debuff on the enemy, rather than the chivalry stuff. Well, you get your own. Look, chivalry's okay if you're a very passive player in Total War. It does reward a passive play style with the morale buff on your own units and the city growth buff as well. If you sort of like role play and don't take <laughs> executive actions against the enemy. So we'll try and rally up further south. We want to try and gobble up as much as the rebel territory as we can. What I like in Medieval 2 is there's a lot of rebel territory, so it's a bit of a land grab towards the start. So we've got Constantinople, we've got Nisha, or Nicaea. Oh, it's N Nish is Serbia, isn't it? It's Nicaea, isn't it? I forgot. We'll try and rally out where we can. Okay, so at the moment, we've only got basic spears, peasantry, not too much. Yeah, so I think we'll try and form the Eastern Roman Empire's historical borders. We do have access to Trevor's on Arches as well. So we have Corinth, Corinth and Thessalonica under our control. Okay, so we want to try and push down and secure southern Turkey, I guess. Your Majesty. Okay, we'll try and marry you off there eventually. And Prince John should be able to siege this one out. It's not going to take too long before those battering rams go through. And we'll send some more spears and archer reinforcements as well. Yeah. So, we're going to be just trying to gobble up as much rebel territory as we can early on. And then, we'll try and go after a major faction. Turkey might be a little bit difficult, as they do have a crazy amount of horse archer buffs. Especially in Medieval, medieval 2. They are quite strong. And from what I can remember, uh, he's actually not too bad. Three star command, 37. I'd I'd rather just marry this guy who's 32. He's a bit younger. Okay, so we've married Theo there. So hopefully they can have some children eventually. Uh, Venice seems to interfere a lot, but we'll just have to see how we go. I'm curious as well to see if the Crusades get called. Maybe we should go and take Jerusalem a little bit later. Because we've got, we've got to take that into consideration. Because we are not a Catholic faction, we're Orthodox. A Crusade can get called against us. So we need to be wary. Probably taking Rome as like the 45th settlement. And Jerusalem as well. Allow a couple Crusades to go through. So we're trying to push and take Southern Turkey here. And... Look, the more border territory we can take, the better. Maybe Rhodes and Sophia. Okay. Uh, should we play this one? Town Militia, Spear Militia, Peasant Archers with Prince John. 1.1k for 600. Sure, let's play this one against the Rebel Scum. Once more unto the breach, dear friends, once more. But I'm curious to see how the AI performs in this. Oh, general speeches, I forgot. It is an honor to be thought a well educated man, for are we not a nation of. Erudite warriors. But I tell you that in all the books I have ever studied, I have never seen an account of creatures as lowly as our foes. However, my learning leads me to suspect that they may die as easily as other men. These rebellious names and villains are not fit to breathe the same air as we honest men. They must all die before dawn comes again. This is a mercy 
because they richly deserve the gallows for turning against their betters. And so at the last I say to the enemy general, do you want to fight? You and whose army? Well, well, you're so tough with all your cheap fluses at your back, are you? Ah, uh, God, I missed those. So, we have four units of uh, Byzantine spears, four units of archers, and two generals bodyguard. So, I'll just try and move like that. Now, I am using a different layout in this. I personally prefer it than the huge bar at the bottom. I think it's like defaulted on third age. Um, but you can get some better, clear shots of the units. And it's easier to hit the taskbar. You don't have that like, huge bar at the bottom. So they're using flammable shots. We'll be right. So we're only move up one battering ram against this small city. And they're trading back and forth. So let's just try and phase and skirmish them out where we can. Pick a target and go. Yeah, because I think like medieval two wise, I've mostly played either stainless steel or like I think yeah, I did that Scottish campaign on the World Campaign, but I've never actually done a brand vanilla series. Here are the cataphractoi. Further at the back, we're going to be able to use them a lot in this series. Alright, so we'll try and break down the gate. The battering ram is in place. It will not be long before our enemy's defenses fall. We better push inside. Fortunately enough, this settlement. The walls aren't as high, so. The inside inhabitants, you can say, are a little bit more conducive to arrow fire. Right, let's just try and speed things up. Move you in. And we'll just try and skirmish them out as best we can. Mostly just rebel peasants. So we'll play a couple battle against the rebels. Once I feel like playing and then we'll resolve the rest. Because you want to be fighting major factions at the end of the day. Right. Let's try and move them up. As they're now running further back. Yeah, but let me know in the comments, feedback and suggestions, tips and tricks, where I should go for. So I think, yeah, just sort of trying to gobble up as much rebel territory is the best thing to do in this land grab, so you don't really piss off anyone just yet. But I basically want to unite the east and reforge eastern Rome. Because the thing is, with this sort of campaign, once you knock out the Turks and the Egyptians, you've got to fight with the Mongols. Which is easier said than done. So we might need to be sort of the, the, the defender of the East. Conquer it, get it under one control, and then, like, fought it off. But we'll see how we go. Depending on your feedback, suggestions, and your support. I doubt we're going to get to the Tumorids. Or like the Byzantine conquest of the New World or the Aztecs. But you never know. We're going to hit our long victory conditions well before that. Yeah. Just felt like going back to vanilla. Something a little bit different. I haven't played vanilla... I don't know, probably six years now, if I'm being honest. The enemy general has no honor. He flees but the field of battle with the Scipio the campaign defense. on Rome 2, you guys seem to like that. Just like the straight up vanilla experience. Also, the load times are really good. <laughs> it's not prone to crashes. Which you never know. It, it, they, they infuriate me so much, crashes. Because I play with so many ex experimental mods. The enemy general's dead now. 
We'll send in the cataphracts to finish them off. So that's always a good change because either Darth mod or I'm playing on some whack pre-built version of the 1212 AD mod that doesn't work or I'm playing some early access DI stuff. It's just a bit of a nightmare sometimes. It's it's mostly it's it's mostly troubleshooting, uh, which can be infuriating. So Prince John won, one thirty one, and Captain Theodorus uh, was defeated. So having a stable vanilla experience. That's the whole thing with the console and PC stuff. Like I don't blame people that have a full time job and they can't be bothered modding or or playing on PC. Just fire up the console and play a bit of Red Dead. I I I know people like that. And I respect it. Okay, we got some... Ah, oh, okay, just some horse arches out of capital. Cool beans. Cool, cool, cool beans. Okay, so we are now officially the largest faction. And we're definitely the strongest. Cool. Well, let's continue it on. Uh, send in emissary to the Turks. And those paved roads and land clearance have finally been completed. Okay, guys, welcome to the top of the turn, turn six. I've sent Prince John and the army down to Rhodes now. And... Yeah, what's inside? Just some peasants. So, we can auto-resolve this one out. So, Rhodes is going to be under our control. The Venetians... We're technically bordering them now because they have Creed, of course. Alright. Uh, okay, so, what's this? I guess this is, like, Dorazo. Oh, I guess we're retaking Epirus. Wife lacks charm. Clear victory. And, ah, uh, okay, so we're actually from a couple sides there. Yeah, because they have territory in Illyria, don't they? The Venetians. Yeah. War with them is inevitable. For battle, laying siege. As they covet our Greek territory. So we'll send some more reinforcements up here to Sophia. Um, I don't particularly want to push over the Danube. But we can if we need to. We need to get Prince John married off. Ah, oh, they've had a son, Nikolaus. So the Byzantine line is continuing. Okay, we should be able to take Sophia here now. Yes. Alright, move up yes. here. So we've got Emperor Alexios yes. pushing north, Rossi while Prince John pushes south. Uh, mostly peasants, Magyar, ethnically Hungarians. 48 years of age. Let's sort of resolve this one. 173. I don't even know if we probably could have done better than that, because we only lost a couple hundred or so last time around. Let's uh, loot and occupy. And we need to get those watchtowers built up as well so we can get a decent line of sight. Okay. Um, we could look to be pushing towards Antioch. Let's go scout that out and have a look. Okay. Turn 8. And the Venetians have disembarked. Yeah. I could hit that preemptively. They have Ragusta. Alright, let's move Emperor Lexios down south. We might be able to get some relations with the Hungarians. Yes. Ah, good. Antioch hasn't been taken. It's always good to check that. Obviously, in 1212 AD and the... I don't know, just various medieval mods. Usually, Jerusalem is a faction in this, but they're not. So, if we can take Antioch... That's a, that's a minor city, but it's huge. Um... Taking Antioch early on for the Byzantines, before the Turks, we'll be able to pincer them in to their weaker mountainous regions towards the north. Uh, yeah. We don't quite have the money. Okay. Yeah, because we've got... The thing is, you've got Cyprus, so it's a really good landing pad into the Middle East. Look, we might actually play this one with Prince John and Evan. Uh, we'll move up towards there. 60% Orthodox. My merchant can stay there. I don't personally like merchants. I think they're a waste of money. 
Um, we're better off getting units. Oh, let's play this one. Um, yeah, so these are Turkish archers and town militia in this side. Let's have the Siege of Antioch. Something a little bit different. Let's fight this one on the field. Because it's actually a major settlement. This is, pro yeah, pr probably the rebel city of Antioch. Yeah. Probably has... It's probably bigger than any other Turkic city to the north. Okay. Five units of ladders. One battering ram. We should have enough. So we'll try and space things out a bit. Yeah, you'd think in this time period there'd be Christians inside, but maybe this is before. The Crusader Conquest or something. Yeah, I'm curious to see who sort of progresses in Europe. Who builds up and becomes the major European power. But if you want to see some more vanilla Total War campaigns, let me know in the comments. I'm definitely not opposed to it. We could do an English campaign, which is always quite fun. But I felt naturally after the Rome 2 DEI campaign, and we've done that for a bit, that playing as the Eastern Roman Empire in some various form might be kind of fun. Especially with Medieval 2, I used to spend so many hours playing this game. Like, I think this is probably my most played Total War game, hours-wise. I reckon if you haven't played Total War before, I recommend probably Rome 2. And then probably this game. Just because of the amount of mods and replayability. Like, even though now it's showing, like, Medieval 2 is showing its date. It's such a fun and enjoyable game. I do highly recommend it. But I remember, like, first sort of, like, I think it was mostly Rome 1. I just remember not fit, knowing how public order worked. Just clearly not, just, <laughs> just been so, so bad. I kind of miss those days. I like, couldn't deal with rebellions properly. Oh. It was so funny when you were just, like, terrible at video games. I haven't got much better, to be honest, but still. Right, the gateway's coming down here. Flaming arrows. I don't know what the choice is with that because that's the whole argument, isn't it? Personally, I think I used to use flaming arrows because I used to like the tracers. They're actually trying to counter charge me here. Those Turkic spearmen, those Selic rebels are probably going to give us a bit of a fight here. Um, but, but yeah, um, I just used to like the tracers that you could actually see. But normal arrows massively reduce the hit points on enemy units accuracy. But you can get like one hit kills in decent volleys. It changes in like third age, you could say. When you get like essentially elven warriors. Or even maybe some of the high tier English bowmen where they're archers, their archer accuracy and damage is exacerbated so much that it's just compounded by arrow fire. So we're starting to arc our shot up and over the walls. We need to deal with these archers that are hitting one with impunity because we're getting a little bit hammered here, so they need to now come up. It looks like those spearmen that engaged... Ah, uh, okay, so they moved back, but they're still fighting. It was a little bit of a bait. I saw movement in the gateway and I thought that my spearmen have thrown them back. But so far, we haven't got the best of army. It's quite scrappy. Just spearmen and archers. Early on, we're only going to have to rely on these light spearmen until we build up our castles. We're not going to be able to get swordsmen for quite some time. Okay, try and focus on that blob there while my spearmen are now distracting their archers. Yeah, I can't recommend just trying to gobble up as much rebel territory as possible. 
What I do like in Medieval 2 as well, that the alliances are a massive part of the sandbox experience because everyone starts off neutral. No one's allied up. Okay, so we're struggling a little bit here. So the alliance blocks that can form up in Europe are different every time. Okay, this might be a little bit tricky. We might have bitten off a little bit more than we can shoot here. So my archers are just soaking up most of the arrow tower fire there. And then they hit me at the back. We might need to swing in my cavalry just to help out. Prince John can sit back because he needs more children. But Evan is fine. We've taken the gateway now, so that will reduce that. It's just yeah, getting picked off and we've only got two left. Now we can send in Prince John as Evan and the other spearmen push up to try and cushion it. Or maybe we could do Saiyan Steel next. I have done a fair few Stainless Steel campaigns on the channel. Along with a lot of just Viking mods as well. But yeah, maybe we can cycle through the Total Wars. I have this year done a Skippy Eye series. We could maybe do the Brutti Eye. I think that is in our favor. the if first Shogun <laughs> Total War will be ours. and like the first Medieval, no one ever suggests those, but I think they're just way too... I never actually, I've never actually played those, but I feel like in 2020 now... Oh good, we got the General. That's good. Oh, they're done now. They're done now. Let's speed things up, they're done for. But... Yeah, and then, and then it sort of goes. We've done a lot of Empire Darth mod recently. We haven't gone to Napoleon for quite some time. Maybe it's time to do a Napoleon campaign. Shogun 2 wise. I mostly have pl Let's Played Fall of the Samurai. I am open to going back to vanilla. But. Uh, so we lost. We, we only lost 600. Okay. Far out. That was a bit of a, a grindy fight. But, um. Hmm. It'd definitely be like the Takeda. Or Takeda. The Red Cavalry Faction that was fun. Or the Chusakabe. Or the Satsuma. I think I've only ever done an Oda campaign. Uh, Aleppo hasn't been taken as well. Hmm. Maybe we can set up like this Middle Eastern block here in the north. And surround the Turks. Ah, oh, here we go. Venice has attacked us now. Turn 11, in Sophia. Okay. Strange. So, Sophia, yeah, so they've attacked us there. We're still the strongest faction. Was, ah, Holy Roman Empire's most advanced. Um, relationships worsen with the Papal States. Okay. Well... Looks like we're going to have to deal with them in the next episode. They've disembarked half a stack in Ragusta. But they attacked me when they had a small army here. Emperor Alexius is going to quickly deal with that. Well, we'll fight them and push against the Venetians now. They obviously have Venice, Illyrian territory, and Crete. Move you further back here. So, we've got one full stack going westward, the other going east. Okay, guys. So, unfortunately, it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for more Medieval 2 Vanilla Definitive Edition on the channel. Uh, coming out tomorrow. Unfortunately, guys, it is time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know in the comment section down below your feedback for the series. And if you'd like to see more, that's the best way to ensure more content. Leave a dislike if you're not enjoying the series. Check out my social media links if you want to stay connected with me. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all in the description below.
Patreon and merchandise link in the description below, along with the Steam group. Come and join the community on Steam. And on that note, unfortunately, I have to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching once again. Make sure to take care of yourselves. Go out and have a fantastic rest of your day. My name is Ben Simsy. Goodbye.